Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Ashby with Ashby Farms. And today is gonna to be a part two of a series on how we build our commercial beekeeping equipment. I hope that you will follow along with us, subscribe to our channel, um, trying to get found on YouTube and part of that algorithm. When you subscribe and comment, it helps me get found as a, as a content producer. And also really guys, I'm here to help, I'm here to serve. So for those of you at home wanting to build your own beekeeping equipment, like for me, I feel accomplished by building it myself. Um, it's oftentimes cheaper at scale for us to build it ourselves, but maybe that's not for, for everybody. But maybe if you've got two, three hives and you want to take on building some of your own equipment, uh, this is going to be a good video to watch. you got to remember, I'm not building the fanciest hives in the world here. I'm building our bare minimums, what we can get by with at the scale to keep the bees alive. Um, sometimes my screw-ups are a blessing and sometimes my screw-ups are a curse. Uh, but like building anything else, uh, you live and learn. So we're currently on like uh, generation three of building our 10 frame deep Langstroth boxes. And uh, if you saw the first video, I showed you our gen one. The reason I showed a gen one box is those are my screw ups, things not to do. Um, so I give you the dimensions on exactly what cuts I make. Of course, we deal with a true one inch thick board. So take that into consideration. If you're at Lowe's uh, buying lumber, then you're going to be dealing with either a three quarter or seven eighths inch thick board. But uh, oftentimes, some people say, oh, I you know, it's, it's just as cheap to go to Lowe's. You're right. Uh, Lowe's is a great place to go. I deal with a local sawmill company uh, out of Prospect Hill, North Carolina, Redding Sawmill. He's great to work with. And he mills all my lumber for me at a fraction of what we could get it from Lowe's. So not only are we supporting a local small uh, business in our economy locally, um, but also I'm building equipment to last for 20 years. Part of that is I don't paint it. Everything is wax dipped. I've got another video up on YouTube. I actually I've got like three or four videos up on YouTube about wax dipping your equipment. If you want to see and I explain why we do what we do, uh, I'm building equipment that's going to last for 20 years. So with all that in mind, on where we go towards our here's how to build a commercial lid video. All right, so I'm gonna start from the beginning of how we get our pieces. So this is our uh, our board for our 10 frame boxes. This would be your outside length, and this is your outside width with a handle in it. And imagine that this and this are a 16 foot long board. So the first thing we do is we chop saw them to length and the second we table saw them to width, which is technically the height of the box. And what we end up with is because I, I order a one by 12, that is our scrap. And each of these are our scrap. And if you notice right here, this top piece is wider than the bottom piece. Why? Because this board had more moisture in it and it shrank up. And I'm going to show you why we deal with these pieces. Just one second. So this is our Gen 1 lid. And talk about screwing up. I was like, oh yeah, we'll take one of these. We'll rip it on a table saw down the middle for our second piece. Everything will be hunky-dory and good to go. You'll notice that... This piece here, our ex excess piece, was cut down, and that creates this one. This same piece mounted here creates that one. And we have excess wax dripping out of the wood now because I screwed up in year one and had too much paraffin in the wax, plus the wax wasn't hot enough, and we have 100 beehives now that leach excess wax. And nothing like screwing up. But at the moment, it serves a purpose. So weatherproof. We're going to discuss the screw up of year one, which is this big quarter inch wide hole in a lids on like, I don't know, 150, 200 lids are made like this. The reason being, the wood wasn't fully cured yet. I got in a big hurry. And once this wood finally shrank up, we ended up with a big gap on a, a lot of our hives. They overwinter fine. You get some robbing in them sometimes. Sometimes the bees propolize this crack shut. Um, talk about what not to do again. So instead, here's our latest and greatest. I like these because we've now got three six inch pieces rather than a one by 12 and a one by six. 
And now our shrinkage is a whole lot less. Um, talking about maybe a sixteenth of an inch there. So some water can get through. But if you look right in here, let's see here, make sure I get on camera. Lots of propolis all through here. Hive beetle traps are the uh, Swiffer sheets. Uh, the bees, they go in, they propolize all the old worm holes, anything they don't like. They even propolize the lids down in place. So, our round two boxes, as you notice, this top piece is shorter than this piece. That's because this came off of one just like that. Here's number two, just like that. That's how I come up with my excess pieces. Let's talk about dimensions. So, this one here is 15 and an eighth because that came off of our end piece with the handle in it. This total length here is 17 inches. And the reason our total length is 17 inches is that's the total length of my, or total width of my box. Show you. Uh, so that's a one inch board, a one inch board and a 15 and an eighth gap. We had a little shrinkage there. You end up with a 17 inch wide lid. And then our total length, remember, let's go back to, let's get one of these. So this is gonna be our long side of our 10 frame boxes. And that total length is 20 and an eighth. So we want the lids to just barely fit over. So our cut length from this edge down here is 20 and a quarter. Total 20 and a quarter. This one's actually 20 and three eighths. Uh, actually, that's correct. This is 20 and three eighths. I'll put those on the screen. So 20 and three eighths, three pieces long. One, two, and three. And how to put them all together. We use what they call a wide crown. It's not a narrow crown, this is a wide crown staple. It's uh, one half inch wide by two inches long. And I get the stainless steel encoded version. And the reason being, these are gonna be outside. So yes, stainless steel is significantly more expensive. However, I wanna build these lids one time and not build them anymore. So I've got this, this piece right here holds these three pieces to the outside. So when I'm building my lids, I'm only worried about the underside being flat. You're gonna have some variance. So in this case, like this board here is an eighth taller than this board here, and this is all rough cut lumber. So we want the bottom side to be flat. So when I'm putting them together here on the bench, I put two of these staples here, two of these staples here, two of these staples here. Then we push this one in and I've got one, two, three, four going into our end piece. And now here we've got two per. So again, we got two, four, and six of these staples going in to the boards. It's a lot of staples. This is not, I should back up. The equipment I'm building, I'm building to last for 20 years. It's the bare minimums that you need for bees. Like the bees can propolize this and weatherproof this. That's not a big deal. But when I'm building this equipment, I want it to last. I'm very rough on my equipment. So when I'm building it like this, I'm making sure to use every last scrap. Plus we're building high quality equipment, stainless steel staples, wax dipping it. You can see some of the residue of the wax leaching out of the wood here. Um, this lid here is gonna go an easy 20 years. Uh, friends of mine who come out and help me beekeep are like, man, your equipment's heavy. Well, yes, yes it is, but we're building high quality equipment. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. That's how I build my commercial lids. There's no inner covers, there's no screens. This goes right on top of the beehive uh, and it holds in the heat. Uh, because we wax dip, any moisture that tries to build up on the wood itself just kind of runs off and beads off. So we don't get a big accumulation of water on top dripping down the cluster. One thing I have noticed uh, in a few of them is uh, on our bottom on our bottom boards, our pallets, I, I run two-way pallets. 
um, we get some accumulation of water sometime and so come winter the best thing we do is just make sure that all the pallets are just slightly tilted forward so the water runs out. Uh, if you guys have enjoyed this content today please subscribe to our channel please comment please like please share whatever you do that that helps me get found as a content producer with the YouTube algorithm and I would really appreciate if you guys would uh, subscribe and help grow our channel. So have a great day. If you got any questions, reach out. Thanks again.